Hello and welcome back to Miniverse where today we are looking back at the first year of this YouTube channel. Now I started this channel a year ago aiming to show what you can achieve if you put aside a few hours a week into learning how to make dioramas. And today we are going to be looking over each of the dioramas and hopefully we'll see some of them progress along the way. Now onto my first ever diorama. This was a great learning experience for me and as a whole this diorama revolved around one singular idea. Using a pistachio nut as a sarlacc pit, which in hindsight also taught me my first valuable lesson, scaling. It's important to figure out how big certain things are in your diorama, and in this case, that sarlacc pit, well, let's just say he's a big boy. Now onto diorama number two. I finally got my hands on that Curse City box set, and I wanted to make a cool duel between two of the characters. I started to get the hang of cutting up foam and the basics of painting, but it still took me so long to get started. This diorama also was the introduction of the first and last ever wire tree I'll be making. Man, did it make my fingers sore. As it was my first time using snow, it looked a bit naff, and a lot of the snow yellowed over time, so I guess it's time to revisit that diorama at a later date. Number 3 now, Halo Infinite just came out, and while there was st and still is a lot of controversy, I still loved the campaign. So I decided to make a Halo Infinite diorama from this. This diorama was my first time I ever 3D printed, and I even made the walls myself. But this project, let me tell you, was a huge pain in the ass, as nearly everything went wrong from the grass to the resin pour. But I guess, overall, it kind of looks okay. This is definitely one I'm going to revisit in a year. Uh, I just want to make it again and make a banging Halo Infinite diorama. So look forward to that if you like Halo. Now on to number four, Forbidden West. Now this game just came out and with the previous game being one of my favorites, I had to try and recreate a scene from it. Now, funny enough, I actually haven't played the game yet, nine months later, as uh, so I don't have a PS5, but I've heard it was good. One of the fun things looking back at this is seeing all the stuff I actually didn't add to it. Uh, the original plan was to add a few robot dinosaur creatures and have Aloy looking down at them ready to destroy them. But such is life, time got on and I didn't have enough time to finish it for that month. Number 5. The quickest diorama I think I've ever made. I made this diorama in about a week or so, and basically all I did was 3D print off some figures and plopped them onto a deserty diorama. <laughs> There's not too much to say about this, but it was my first time discovering how nice contrast paints can be. And now let's talk about some more exciting stuff. Diorama number 6. This is probably still one of my favourite dioramas to date, and features yet another cursed city miniature hunting down the illustrious wolf. At the end of the diorama, in my opinion, it still looks really cool. There's a lot of storytelling, and if I were to show anyone my dioramas, it would probably be this one. Now after watching a lot of Night Shifts videos, I decided to make a small tank diorama. This was a lot of fun to build and was really simple, but I did improve on making some snow. Now, onto the diorama that pretty much no one watched, and probably my worst one yet, number 8. 
Now, after watching the Kenobi show, I was pretty hyped and really wanted to make a diorama showing off the beginning of the series. But unfortunately, my painting skills for this were pretty bad. The idea was great, but the execution was, let's just say, not so great. I mean, look at that face. Now, this was my most successful video to today. And after watching a lot of Boiler like Hobby Times videos, I thought it was time to make something with LEDs. So I made a scene where some blood angels were facing the fearsome Necrons. And this was my biggest diorama to date and took a lot of time, which I think paid off. One thing to note though, those LED filaments are super bright. If anyone knows how to make them less bright, hit me up and let me know. My most recent Cursed City diorama, a man walking through some spooky woods. I'd say this is in my top three dioramas of all time, <laughs> for me, not anyone else, obviously, because uh, there's super cool people out there who make far better stuff. But I think this looks pretty cool. It's definitely one of the better looking ones in hand and on camera. I got to use a lot of roots for trees, which was a first, and overall, great learning experience. Cannot complain. The Crashed Escape Pod. This was a pretty nice break I had. I think I was burning out a little bit, deciding what to do, so I decided to make this cool little kit from Star Wars Legion. But boy, did I have to get my hands steady to paint R2. That miniature, a lot smaller than it looks. Overall, I think I'm pretty happy with it. It looks pretty cool. I probably changed some of the elevation, but I'm pretty happy with it now. Now onto the final, and well, hopefully not final, but the most recent diorama, my Necrons escaped. This was great, and not only did I discover a thing called clay, I also made up my own color scheme for miniatures instead of looking at source photos, which I cannot be, it was a lot of fun. If you can ever paint something without looking at source photos, highly recommend it. It's challenging and brings out the creativity. But that brings us to a close. If you liked any of my videos, make sure to like and subscribe to replenish my steadily dropping serotonin levels. So thanks, I've been Reese, and I'll catch you next time.